Martin Scorsese has brought some of Hollywood's grittiest films to life, but how has the Oscar winner himself lived over the years? Grab some popcorn as we go behind the scenes of the exclusive homes of Martin. From Queens to Beverly Hills and back again, this is a cinematic journey you won't want to miss. Martin Scorsese is one of the most acclaimed directors of all time. Known for gritty films like Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, and The Departed, Scorsese has been living in a beautiful townhouse on the Upper East Side of Manhattan for over two decades now. But before settling into his current New York City home, Martin lived in some different environments growing up and throughout his career. So. Let's explore a few of Scorsese's former homes and see how they reflect his life journey. When Martin was just seven years old, his family moved from Queens back to Manhattan's Little Italy neighborhood. They lived with his grandparents in a crowded tenement apartment on Elizabeth Street. Scorsese later said about Little Italy, there was an atmosphere of fear. The local authorities did not wear badges, but they had the power to tell you what to do. And there were rules. The first one was to say nothing. Though he didn't have much freedom in the tiny apartment due to his asthma, Scorsese found escape through films. He said, I was taken to the movies where I developed a great fondness for studio pictures. The family's TV also showed him classic foreign films multiple times a week, fueling this obsession. Growing up in Little Italy had a huge impact on Scorsese, shaping his worldview and creative interests. Later on, Martin lived in high-rise apartments with amazing views before moving to the Upper East Side in New York City. But he feels like living in these types of homes is not personal enough for him. He also tried living in lofts with beautiful spaces and beautiful light. The industrial downtown neighborhoods reminded him too much of the streets where he grew up. These days, Scorsese feels right at home in his Upper East Side townhouse, which he moved into almost 25 years ago. The 19th century mansion has a garden reminding Marty of Edith Wharton novels. He said the neighborhood has a small town feel to it, even with a busy avenue on the corner. The designer of his house is Kara Houghton. She helped in designing it and she made his home a safe space. The decor of each floor in his townhouse has a different mood, adapted to its function. The first floor dining room opens to the garden, and Scorsese wanted it to have a provincial country feeling. The fourth floor study is the director's lair. He works and reads there, listens to music, screens films, and watches a TV that he often keeps tuned to the American movie channel. Houghton's greatest challenge when it came to designing his home was the open living space on the second floor. The old dumbwaiter shaft, now an elevator, bisects it and it couldn't be repositioned. So she created two separate reception areas, making the most of the natural light with pale wood floors, accrued walls, and recessed lighting. There's also a parlor of subdued Napoleonic elegance that can seat 10 or 12 for a screening. Also, there's a sophisticated library where there is a mixed upholstered sofa with an antique rug, a Victorian desk, a wall of bookshelves, and side chairs. The only artifacts in Martin Scorsese's house that recall mean streets are a bottle of grappa and a piece of turquoise pottery from Positano on the sideboard in his dining room. His rooms are warm, decorous, elegant in a manly fashion, and unpretentious. So. After this whirlwind house tour, we'll wrap up this video, but before we go, answer this question for me. What is your favorite movie directed by Martin Scorsese? Let me know in the comments below. For me, I'm gonna have to say it's Goodfellas. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. I'm Care the Vampire Slayer, but if you'd like to check out another tour before we go, stay tuned for this look into the homes of the late and great Ray Liotta. Bye. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. The world is mourning the unexpected death of the great actor Ray Liotta, who passed away in his sleep on May 26, 2022, while filming in the Dominican Republic. For more than 25 years, he lived in a stunning mansion in Pacific Palisades, California, and was still living in the same area despite selling this grand estate in 2020. Either way, it will be a place full of memories of the late film star. 
Ray Liotta was an actor and film producer who despite having 126 film credits was best known for his role in the renowned 1990 Martin Scorsese flick Goodfellas, where he played New York mobster Henry Hill. Aside from that hit movie where he starred alongside Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, Ray also was well known for playing Shoeless Joe Jackson in the movie Field of Dreams. At the time of his unexpected death, Liotta actually had several upcoming projects according to IMDb, including the Elizabeth Banks directed movie Cocaine Bear, set to be released in February 2023. Ray was only 67 when he recently passed away in his sleep and he was in the Dominican. Ray was only 67 when he recently passed away in his sleep and he was filming in the Dominican Republic the movie Dangerous Waters. Other details and the cause of death are not yet known, but there seem to be no signs of foul play. Ray's last known public moments depicted happy times for the critically acclaimed actor, most spent with his fiance JC Nitolo. Early in May, the pair was spotted in good spirits walking in Pacific Palisades, California, where Leota lived, after enjoying a meal at the Spruzzo Italian restaurant. The couple had been engaged since Christmas 2020. They were also spotted enjoying a meal together at a steakhouse in the Dominican just two days before his passing. JC also broke her silence about her partner's shocking death with a touching post to social media saying, My life these past couple of years have been nothing but truly magical. Ray and I share a deep love that I will cherish in my heart forever. We laughed daily and we were inseparable. The chemistry was wild in the best way. He was everything in the world to me and we couldn't get enough of each other. Well, I think it's safe to say that Ray will be missed dearly. At the time of his death, it's reported that the actor had amassed a mass net worth of about $15 million. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive poster here on Famous Entertainment, and in this one, we're looking at the one-time homes, the late and great Ray Liotta. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. In 1995, Ray bought his longtime mansion in the Pacific Palisades neighborhood of Los Angeles for about $2.5 million, which was built just a few years prior in 1992. The residence was a three-story Mediterranean-style home that boasted over 8,500 square feet of space with six bedrooms and nine bathrooms, as well as many other upscale amenities. In case you're unfamiliar, Pacific Palisades is an affluent residential neighborhood tucked between the Santa Monica Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. Ocean. Some highlights include Temescal Gateway Park full of hiking trails with sweeping coastline views as well as the sandy Will Rogers State Beach with a 22 mile beachfront bike path. Ray's longtime estate offered over three acres of land with sweeping canyon views from almost every angle, and it was gated for celeb style privacy. A 20 foot grand entryway sets a stately tone for what's to come, leading into expansive common spaces under beamed ceilings. The great room inside the mansion offers an airy vibe with double height and wooden beamed ceilings, while the whole space is bathed in natural light also offering a fireplace. Other hallways and common spaces have mainly sleek, light-colored marble flooring underfoot, while some rooms such as that great room boast rich colored hardwood. Another room decked out in wood is this stunning and classic library, which also serves as a den with its cozy fireplace. And nearby, there's a sprawling formal dining room with red accent wall and high ceilings overhead. The family style kitchen was spacious with a central work island that also contained the upscale stovetop and range. While we can also see there are a total of four ovens stacked on one side of the room. There's even a bonus casual eating area combined with the kitchen too. This space flows into a more laid back family room with TV, large stone fireplace, full bar in one corner, and sets of French doors leading outside. Ray's former master suite looks as if it's out of a five-star resort, with its breezy private terrace and separate sitting area furnished in plenty of white. Not to mention the all-white ensuite bath is even more impressive, with the soaking tub under soaring ceilings and sunny windows, separate glass shower and double vanities. Aside from the spacious guest rooms, there was also another level in the mansion with red walls dedicated to being a rec room or games room. The lot at Ray's house was said to be the largest in the neighborhood of the palace 
Palisades Highlands where it was located. And it even came with conceptual plans for a tennis court, guest house, and a second swimming pool. The terrace estate boasted a palm tree lined swimming pool and spa with covered lounge chairs surrounding it and lush gardens with paths were all dotted over the property. One garden here even had a cute and romantic bridge surrounded by plantings, while there was even a space to dine al fresco out back. Despite how happy Ray was at his fortress, he first tried to sell this place in 2014, asking over $6.5 million for it, a price that would prove to be too much for the market at the time. He decided to keep the home, continue living there, and in 2019, try once again to sell, but this time for even more at over $7.7 .7 million. Again, no one bit. He had lowered the price significantly and put it back on the market after that. And finally, in May 2020, Leota sold the home for $5.1 million. Despite selling that glorious mansion, Ray was still reportedly living in Pacific Palisades, but there's little known about his other home. Aerial views show another Mediterranean style mansion with features like a grassy lawn and sleek pool and spa, which is said to be the other Pacific Palisades house that he bought in 2003. If this is the home he continued to own, he had paid $2.7 million for the estate and it boasted five beds and five baths within 6,184 square feet of space. While old listing materials don't show photos of the home, they say the house is custom built with views of both the ocean and the mountain vistas. Also throughout the mansion, there were limestone floors, soaring ceilings, crown moldings, and recessed lighting. Other highlights included a chef's kitchen with maple cabinets, granite center island, and a breakfast nook, as well as a master suite with a fireplace, balcony, two walk-in closets, and luxury marble bath. Well, it appears that despite Ray Liotta's untimely death, he was enjoying his final days making movies and spending time with his fiance. You can also see he had some beautiful homes in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles, an area he had lived in for more than 25 years. After seeing Ray's one-time homes, what did you guys think? Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the acclaimed actor's homes down below. I know Ray will be dearly missed not only by his loved ones, but by his fans and the film world. Certain his movies will be enjoyed for years to come. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye!